Hey guys, guess what I got? Mega Man upon... Mega Man Upon a Star. What is Mega Man Upon a Star? It's a three episode OVA made by Capcom and one moment while I get the name, it's absolutely enormous, at least in my opinion. Uh, the Japan Center for Intercultural Communications. So Capcom and the Japan Center for Intercultural Communications teamed up with the American production company Ruby Spears to make Mega Man Upon a Star a three episode OVA. So what does this mean? Well, Ruby Spears is the company that made the original Mega Man cartoon, so it means lots of bad voice acting. Who are you? And what are you doing? It's Mega Man! And the Japan Center for Intercultural Communications means the entire plot is going to be revolving around random trivia about Japan. It is the most insane thing I've ever seen. Like, I constantly make jokes about, like, oh, they'll solve the day by knowing this tiny bit of trivia. And that actually is what happens in this. It is unbelievably hilarious. If Wily's using the volcano's power, it'll be terrible! So what's Japan's biggest volcano? It has to be Mount Fuji! Mount Fuji? <laughs> Even Mega Man would never guess that I'd be building a secret base here. <laughs> okay. It's done! This will be the first robot powered by volcano energy! So seriously, join me while we go and check out Mega Man Upon a Star! So yeah, basic rundown. Mega Man Upon a Star is a three-episode OVA with Mega Man 5 Robot Masters, wherein Wily and Mega Man travel to the real world. Even though it's never remotely addressed why, the Mega Man characters can now leave the game. But if I were to guess why they can now do this, I would bet it has something to do with that kid having a totally baller second model NES, just like I do. That thing is so freaking awesome. The controller is way more comfortable, no sharp edges, and the games are way more likely to work on this thing. I mean, seriously, totally great. One downfall is that there's no composite out, which is the three cables, you gotta use your RF switch. So lower quality video but you know second model nes is great that kid's got one too as you can clearly wait why the hell does this kid have a composite out on that thing oh oh apparently it's a second model famicom which apparently has an av out because apparently japan's cool like that yeah that's great japan that's great that's awesome for those who don't know the original NES had an AV out, whereas the second thing just has the RF out, which is great because I got my Sega CD hooked up to my NES, hooked up to my TV. You know how much interference that gets? Back to the OVA itself. Wily escapes into the real world in each of the three episodes, and Mega Man has to chase him across Japan while he learns about Japan's beautiful countryside and culture. It's hilarious how many plot points are tied as closely as possible to Japanese culture. It's also kind of funny that they take a jab at other countries right here. I get home at around 9 tonight. You are kidding you stay out that late? Bye -bye, That's Mega dangerous. Man, goodbye, I must protect you. Bye, but don't worry, Mega Man. It's nothing special for Japanese kids. That's because it's really safe in our country. I think the idea here is Mega Man's a stand-in for the audience, which was clearly Americans, but... Still, Mega Man's from Japan, and in my mind, he always has been. I mean, freaking Yamato Man. Moving on, the first episode in the OVA plays it pretty straightforward. Wily escapes, runs amok, Mega Man has to go stop him, Wily becomes a ninja. I don't give up that easily, because <laughs> I'm a ninja! Huh? Here's a smoke bomb! Let's go ahead and check if that's different in Japanese. Okay, that's a little more sane. I mean, doctors do tend to study things after all, not just manifest ninja abilities out of nowhere when the time arises. Though that would make House a lot more amazing. Episodes 2 and 3 retread a lot of the same world jumping ground that the first episode did, but involved time travel because of reasons? It's alright in episode 2 because the time travel gimmick is well used to set up a plot point or two. It was said that a giant meteorite caused the dinosaurs to become extinct and turn the Earth into the Ice Age. That is correct. 
Not only Japan, where Mega Man is at, but the whole world will be in great pain. That would be horrible. Episode 3 doesn't use the time travel gimmick well in the least. I honestly believe I would have enjoyed this DVD more if episode 3 wasn't even here. Every 30 seconds they jump in the time machine, supposedly so they can catch Wily, but it's really just to talk about more Japanese culture. That's the main reason I dislike it. I mean, it's not like the whole thing's a masterpiece or anything, but episode 3 is just constantly redundant. Just, just jump back in the time machine. Oh, it's coin and borrow day. Okay, jump back in the time machine. Oh, it's whatever girls do. Oh, jump back in the time machine. You, you jump too far, Mega Man. Everyone's dead. Aside from the three episodes, the DVDs lack any noteworthy special features. They got the English dub, the Japanese dub, subtitles, and some trailers for some other animes brought over by ADV. Ultimately, I enjoyed this as a fan of Mega Man for the same reasons that I enjoyed the intro to Mega Man 8. It's really cool to see the Robot Masters and Mega Man crew animated like this. I also found it hilarious how trivia chalked this OVA is and burst into laughter multiple times over the incredulous nature of it all. I mean, seriously, that's comedy gold. Mount fucking Fuji is the answer to where Wily is. The render quality of the episodes is absolutely terrible, with tons of blurry transitions between frames and low-quality MPEG artifacts everywhere. The episodes are a little inconsistent with the style of animation, slightly changing in between. It's pretty jarring. They also swap out a voice actor or two in between episodes, and another odd thing is that in episode one, Rush wants shut the hell up, but in another episode, he doesn't speak even once. It's weird that they keep changing things, but it's alright by me. I don't really care. Mega Man Upon a Star's DVD version is about 20 bucks if you can net a copy online. And, you know, that's pretty cheap. I think most Mega fans would enjoy it. So, yeah, there you go, that's our review. Uh, for $20, Mega fans can't really do much better. Except for this shirt. This shirt's amazing. Okay, it's a shirt, right? But it's got Mega Man on it. It's a Mega Man shirt. Mega shirt. Mega Man Upon a Star is only $20 if you can find a copy online. So go find a copy online and check it out today. And stay at thegigaboots.com until we upload our next video. Just stay on the website. Stay there. Yeah.